was in my early 20s, I was an artist in New York City, part of a very well-known group of artists, abstract expressionists, uh, Clement Greenberg and Helen Frankenthal and Teresa Litsky and Larry Prince and others. And I was much younger than they were. And I was painting also at the New York Studio School from the figure nine to five every day. And so I was uh, looking around and I thought that the leading artist of any generation would be using the latest technologies available to them to make the art they want to make. And I had found out about digital audio so I thought I would do some research and look around to see what the latest technologies were for the visual arts. But it was just at that time that they were, in, they were inventing um, digital computer graphics that would allow for color. Before that, there was very little color. And of course, there were no color printers or, or things like that. And so just at that time, Alvy Ray Smith at NYIT published a paper on the color cube, and he and Ed Catmull uh, had a very interesting uh, high-end lab at that school where they had full color systems, uh, maybe the only ones that existed at that time uh, in, 19, in the 1970s. And so in 79, I started using the paint system that Alvi wrote at NYIT, and I was able to use a pen and tablet and almost everyone who was using computers at that time uh, was using a, a keyboard and punch cards and things like that. The first time I used Alvi's paint system, I realized it was exactly the tool I was looking for. It gave me color control and a full range of color and it was very fast, as fast as my mind wanted to try things, do things, change things and create things, it, I was able to use it. The way I've always approached computer graphic systems is the way I always approach going to a, an art supply store. I would walk in and anything I didn't know how to use, I would try or I would try to try out. And the same with the computer graphic systems. I would try out various capabilities and push them to see what kinds of things I could do that appealed to me to make the images I wanted. I want to talk about uh, my development uh, using uh, computers in art from the very beginning in uh, the late 70s. Uh, at that time, uh, I always wanted to try and get my work that I created on the computer into some physical medium because what is it what good is it if it's just in the computer you can't show it you can't share it you can't have it in your home on a wall to enjoy it or anything like that and so I would say a large part of my career has been finding ways to take my work from the computer into physical medium and the, the things that I've tried include ceramics I have taken my digital images and put them on ceramic tiles. I have taken my digital images uh, through film and created uh, silkscreen editions and also silkscreen monoprints more recently. Very early on, I was fortunate to work with Krishna Reddy at his uh, um, etching studio at NYU and I was able to, to do the Scott City etchings using some of the separations from my digital imagery photographically onto zinc plates and printing those. I still work now with a uh, master etcher and a master uh, artist who does silkscreen printing, additioning, uh, whenever I want to do more prints. And that has been a really wonderful uh, experience. It's only recently that it's possible to have color printers that can print large-scale paintings on canvas. And I really enjoy that option as well. For many years, I used to project my paintings that I did on the computer onto the wall and airbrush and paint them by hand. Uh, today, I uh, am a member of Lightwork, which is a high-end photographic center in Syracuse, New York, and I can go there and they have 60-inch printers and I can have the uh, UNH photo ship up a bolt of canvas and I can spend several days there making and printing out all of my paintings uh, that I've created over the last number of months. And so uh, as the technology advances, I've been able to 
uh, use the latest options that it offers me. And my imagery, I think, is recognizable through my entire history, although of course it changes a little bit over time. All art uh, takes something from the medium that you're using to make it. Whatever tools you're using, they have an impact on the kind of work that you're able to make. So if you're working with uh, oils, you have to know about the technology. You have to know which colors dry faster. You have to know how to apply them properly, which brushes to use, and those sorts of things. It's the same with the computer. You have to know what kinds of tools you want to use and how to use them. And of course, as you get more experienced with the tools, they lead you to try things that you can't do in other mediums. And so my work changed quite a bit when I started using computers. For the last number of years, I've had the opportunity to paint in full three dimensions in a 3D virtual world with goggles on and paint uh, program tools in that virtual world. I've wanted to do that for many, many years, but the technology wasn't available to do it until just maybe mm, five years ago or something like that. And fortunately, I uh, was the first artist in residence at the Courant Institute of Mathematical Sciences at NYU many years ago in the early 80s. Today, that lab is called the Future Reality Lab, and the director is Dr. Kenneth Perlin. Uh, it's a wonderful laboratory, and so I'm able to go there, and I was able to use the latest technology to paint these three-dimensional light sculptures. When I'm doing that in the virtual world, one of the tools I have is a camera. And when I was very young, uh, I was fortunate to be able to go with Clement Greenberg and other artists to artist studios to look at other artists' work and to crit work. And something that I learned at Larry Poon's studio was cropping pictures to make the painting. The way that Larry Poons was working at that time was to take a bucket of paint and throw it at the wall and it would drip down the wall. And then after the wall, all the walls around were covered from floor to ceiling with paint, he would go and he would pop out which part of it to stretch on canvas and call a painting. And so when I'm in the virtual world, I do something similar. Of course, I'm not throwing paint at a wall. I'm painting with light, colored light. Uh, I can control the brush strokes, I can control the thickness, the paint, the textures, and those sorts of things. Then I can crop out with my camera which parts of the painting, for instance this one, this is part of a 3D light sculpture that I took my camera and cropped out. Once I have all of these potential cropped paintings that I have saved, I can take them then into Photoshop, which I have used since the very beginning of Photoshop for many years, and of course, I started the first graduate program in computer art on the planet at the School of Visual Arts in New York in the early 1980s, and I taught Photoshop there for many, many years, so I'm very comfortable with that software. And I can then take these cropped images that I have from of the three-dimensional light sculptures that I painted in the virtual world, and I can turn them into paintings. And I do this in in ways that the tools allow, but my aesthetic is still very similar to abstract expressionist and color field painting. artists who have influenced me the most are maybe Kandinsky and Paul Clay. The artists I admired very much uh, also were Matisse and uh, Cezanne, um, Larry Poons, Helen Frankenthaler, and also I admired the way that Jules Olitsky was able to get washes of color and all the color uh, on the canvas in all kinds of texture as well. And so I, these artists have all been a big influence on me.
think of myself as a formalist abstract painter. And so I approach my work uh, without a preconception of what the final image will look like. And I'm often very surprised. For instance, in the last couple of years, because of COVID, or I don't know why exactly, I've been living at my place uh, in the Catskill Mountains and doing a lot of gardening. And so when I make these big abstract paintings in a 3D virtual world, some of them turn out to be gigantic flowers. I don't do this consciously. It just turns out that way. It's what is on my mind. I do go to a lot of trouble to make sure that I don't have negative thoughts when I'm working. I don't look at uh, very t all the terrible news we're living through. Uh, it's just all the things going on in the world. I think uh, whatever is going through someone when they're making art, this is, that's what comes out in their work. I think the best thing I can do is to have very positive, uplifting work to present in the world for people. Um, everyone can't spend all their time being depressed and worried about what's going to happen and living through all of the very bad things. Uh, Ukraine, for instance, and global warming. I mean, there's, there's so many problems that we're facing. I think art has to try. There are some artists, certainly, who can address that in a much more direct way than I do. I direct that myself to create and put positive and good things into the world. This is a very beautiful location and there's a huge amount of positive energy here. Everyone in the film industry is so excited and it's easy. You can see why these artists want to have positive things and wonderful color in their work. They would come to an environment like this with the light the way it is, with all of the plants, uh, with the wonderful food and the pleasantness and the, and the pace. Everything about this is just very enjoyable here makes it possible to actually, I think, if I were here longer, it would be easy, easy to work with, it would be very nice to work with.